A particle is projected vertically upwards with a velocity of u meters per second in a resisting medium. Assuming that the retardation due to this resistance is equal to kV squared, find the expressions for the greatest height reached and the time taken to reach that height. So, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get a diagram which shows all the forces acting on the particle. So, we have here is going to be our ground, T equal to zero, X is equal to zero, and V is equal to U meters per second. That's our initial velocity. And the particle travels up and it reaches some maximum height because it's not going to go on indefinitely forever. It's going to reach some maximum height. At this time, we're not sure at this height, we're not sure what the time is. We're not sure what the x value is, but we're going to call that x max. But we do know what the velocity is. We know that the velocity will be zero at the maximum height. Because at the maximum height, it has to stop before it comes back down. So the velocity is zero. So, okay, we have our particle somewhere here. And what are the forces acting on the particle? So the obvious one is gravity, we always have gravity acting downwards, mg, and we are told that we have a resisting medium. So there's a retardation due to this resistance, and it's equal to kV squared. Now a retardation is a negative acceleration. It's the deceleration, or the negative acceleration, due to the resisting medium. So we have the force of kV squared, that's the acceleration, so that the force is going to be m times kV squared. And if this is the resistance or the uh, direction of resistance, then this is our positive direction of motion. And we always should specify what our positive direction of motion is. Okay, so we have our positive direction of motion, we have our forces, great. Now we can apply Newton's second law which says that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So, again, these forces are going to be negative because they're in the opposite direction of the positive direction of motion. So, negative m kV squared plus negative mg, so just minus mg, should be equal to mass times acceleration. That's just Newton's law. And now we can cancel out our m's and take a factor of negative 1 on this side. So we'll have minus kV squared plus g equals a. Cool. So we have this, and let's just look again what, we, what we're what we looking to find. We're looking for expressions for the greatest height reached and the time taken to reach that height. So the greatest height reached is a distance. So we're looking to somehow involve the variable x in this. And the way to do that is to use the expression of acceleration that involves an x. And that is acceleration equals x, pardon me, v times dv dx. So we're going to be using that in order to find our greatest height. So v times dv dx, which is our acceleration, should be equal to minus kv squared plus g. Great. Dividing by v, and we get minus kv squared plus g over v. And now I want to flip both sides of this equation. So dx on dv equals negative v over k squared v squared, so that's just a single k, k times v squared plus g. And the reason I've flipped that equation is now you can see I can integrate both sides with respect to v, which is going to be helpful in getting an expression of x in terms of v. So I can integrate both sides with respect to v equals, take a minus out, minus v over k, kv squared plus g dv. Okay, the, the left-hand side is quite easy, it's just x, but the right-hand side... Well, hopefully you can see that this is almost the standard form of a log. It's almost a function on the denominator with its derivative on the top. 
all we're missing is a factor of 2k. So if I can divide by 2k and then multiply by 2k, I'll have that standard form, k b squared plus g dv. So that's minus 1 on 2k, log of the denominator, kv squared plus g, and of course plus a constant c. Okay, so whenever we have these constants c, we need to determine the value of this constant, and the way we do that is we use our initial conditions, or it might not be initial, but it's just the conditions that are given to us in the question. In this case, they happen to be initial conditions. So, our initial condition is that at t equals 0, x equals 0, and v equals u. So, t equals 0, x equals 0, v equals u. If I sub that in, I get 0 equals negative 1 on 2k, log of k u squared plus g plus c, and so therefore c is going to be 1 on 2k, log of k u squared plus g. Okay, continuing on. So if we have this as our integration constant, we can now write x equals minus 1 on 2k, log of, what did we have, k v squared plus g, plus the constant, which is 1 on 2k, log of k u squared plus g. And I can combine these using my log laws, and I get 1 on 2k log of k u squared plus g over k v squared plus g. Great. Now, what did my question actually ask for? It asked for expressions for the greatest height reached. So, we said in our diagram that the greatest height was reached when v equals 0. So here we're going to use v equals 0. x is at its maximum when the velocity is 0. So therefore x max is going to be 1 on 2k log of k u squared plus g over this term becomes 0 plus g. So it's just g on the in the denominator. And I can divide by g, but it's not completely necessary. And I get k over g u squared plus 1. And that is my expression for the maximum height reached. Great, so that's the first thing that we needed. Now the second part was to find the time taken to reach that height. And that height is being is referring to the greatest height. So, the time taken to reach that. How can we involve uh, the time variable t? Well, again, we'll refer back to this equation here. Negative of k v squared plus g equals a. Now, our expression for a, or acceleration, we're going to use dv on dt, equal to minus k v squared plus g. Once again, I'm going to flip my equation, flip both sides, negative 1 on kv squared plus g, and you'll see that this is quite a common thing that we do. We often flip the equations in order to be able to integrate easily. So continuing on doing that, I'm integrating both sides with respect to v. Now, <clears throat> hopefully, you can see that this is going to turn out to be an inverse tan. But if you can't, we can do either a substitution or a little bit of manipulation. But I think manipulation is the best way to go. So first, this side is simply just t. But here, we're going to divide the top and the bottom by k. So we're going to get 1 on k. Now dividing this by k will give me v squared plus g on k. And hopefully now, oh, dv, hopefully now you can see that this is of the form, the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx. And we know that that's on the back of our standard integral sheet. But hopefully you're confident enough to not have to look at that and just know that that's going to be a tan inverse. So here I just have a constant, 1 on k, that's fine. Now it's going to be tan inverse of 
uh, v over a, in our case, a is the square root of g on k. So the square root of g on k. And I also need to divide this whole thing by 1 on a. Sorry, I divide by a, which is like multiplying by uh, 1 on a. So that would be the same as multiplying by, let's see, the square root of k on g. So I've flipped the fraction here. And again, I have another constant. This time I'm going to call it k, just to have no confusion with the previous part. All right, so that's what t equals. I can do a little bit of cancellation here, and I'll get 1 over the square root of kg, 10 inverse. Now I have a fraction on the denominator, so I can flip it and bring it up. That'll be the square root of k on, on g times v, plus, oh, I should use something other than k. Let's call this, uh, what's another letter? h, plus h. Okay, so unfortunately my phone just ran out of battery there. But anyway, continuing on. We need to find our integration constant h. So, to do that we're going to use our initial conditions, which we have here. t equals 0, x equals 0, v equals u. So, substituting t equals 0 in and v equals u in, we find that 0 equals minus 1 on the square root of kg times the inverse 10 of the square root of k on g times u plus h, and so h is then going to be 1 on the square root of kg, 10 inverse the square root of k on g times u. Okay, so therefore, t is going to be negative 1 on the square root of kg, 10 inverse square root of k on the square root of g times v plus 1 on the square root of kg 10 inverse uh, square root of k on g u. Now the question has asked for the time taken to reach the maximum height. So again we're going to look at our conditions at maximum height and the condition is that v is equal to 0. So at the maximum height v equals 0, let's just move this up, maximum height v equals 0, so therefore if I sub v equal to 0 in, you can see that this term, the 10 inverse of 0 is 0, so this term is going to actually become completely 0, this term is unaffected by the substitution of v, equals to, v equal to 0, so I'm left with this as my expression for the time taken to reach the maximum height. And that's, whatever this number is, many seconds for the time to reach, for the particle to reach the maximum height. And that is your final answer for the second part of the question.